the constitution of india preamble we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation in our constituent assembly this 26th day of november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution hello children welcome back hope you are ready for uh, beginning with the third unit beyond the horizon children what is the meaning of the word horizon it is very familiar to you and you have enjoyed the sight of this horizon too can me tell me yes you are nearing the answer yes it is a skyline where the earth seems to meet the sky and what is the meaning of beyond the horizon it is an idiom okay it is an idiom that means a bit too much and here it is farther than the possibilities okay horizon where have you enjoyed this sight is it by staying at your home or by traveling outside from where have you enjoyed the sight of this horizon not at home you are sure about it then from where yes very clearly it is visible when you stand by the seashore and when you gaze at a long distance you know you feel like the sea and the sky meets when you grow up you know what the science is and you understand it is called horizon when you try to go towards the horizon the horizon extends or moves away from you so farther than the possibilities okay so you cannot enjoy the beauty by staying at home no isn't it you are sure about it then how is it possible definitely you will have to travel so what is your opinion about travel you wish or you like to travel yes we'll come back to that point again and now let me see what is your opinion about travel yes i have a quote for you by saint agustin he said world is like a book and the one who do not travel reads only a page is it not a true fact once when you get a book you will have to read all the pages to enjoy the essence of the book isn't it so here if you don't travel the world seems meaningless colorless and what happens when you travel each time you travel to a same place you have an artistic eye to understand about the place in different perspectives have you not felt so it is definitely a recreation for us it makes us a better people how does it make you come to know or you learn about the custom tradition culture lifestyle food their occupation their language and all these things when you come to learn about different people and you try to adopt certain things that is good for you too and you become more civilized as normally we think that people who travel a lot are uh, flaky and unfocused do you feel so have you not thought like that yes if so just rub it off 
Once when you try to get lost in uh, travel, you get rich experience of life and your life becomes so wonderful and colorful. Okay, once when you go for a travel and you come back home, how do you feel? You feel refreshed, isn't it? Rejuvenated. Leaving all your burdens, your worries, your hectic life, everything aside, you become energetic. And what happens is, simultaneously your heart and mind opens up for the new possibilities of life. Is it not? Is it not so? Nowadays travel has become a show off. What is the purpose of travel is that you will have to travel to see many places. And it is not make others see. And it is also said that uh, more than hearing about a thing for thousand times, it is better to see that place for one time. Once when you travel to that place, then it, that memories hold on to you forever. See, I think you know about uh, Shipton, Eric Shipton. You know, Eric Shipton was the one who explored the Himalayas. He died in 1977. Okay. If at all he had not recorded his uh, adventurous trips to this mountain ranges, we would not have been able to enjoy it even after this 50 years of time. All his memories would have been faded into dust. So, it is better to pen down all your experiences and memories once when you go for a travel and come back. I think we are all wrapped up by our daily routine like uh, living, eating, sleeping and all these things as a routine we do. And what happens is at a point of time it becomes so strenuous. Life becomes monotonous at a point of time. And what happens is we lose our health and happiness. And if you lose your health and happiness, everything is lost, isn't it? And life becomes a failure. There was once a period where traveling was uh, considered to be a part of luxury. But nowadays it's not so, I know. Because once when you feel fatigue about your boring, about your uh, regular life, people now have started to move to different places to relax their boredom. Earlier people thought about wasting of time and money. But now those have turned to be the assets of our life. What more? There is, it is an uncertain period we are living. So by traveling we gain so much. In fact, we fail uh, even to visit our uh, nearby beautiful places, isn't it? Do we know what are the uh, attractive spots, tourist spots in our nearby area? We will not go. So, keeping all these things aside. Now, are you ready to join me for a travel towards a hill place? Shall we go for a trekking right now? Without the second thought, without the second thought, let us move beyond the horizon. Shall we move? Okay. Yes. Now we will begin with the lines from the lesson. Okay. Beyond the horizon. You have few lines there by Alfred Lord Tennyson. All experience is an arch way through, gleams that untraveled world whose margin fades forever and forever when I move. So these are the beautiful powerful words of the Greek hero Ulysses.
Okay, Lortenizan speaks through this character. It is a soliloquy of Ulysses. What he says is that he feels how boring it is to stay at home and rule his kingdom for so much of time. It is really boring, he says. And only travelling gives him an experience more than that of he gets from ruling the kingdom. See, even if he can never reach the untravelled areas, margins of the untravelled areas, he will keep trying until the end. For him, life is not all about breathing and motions. It is more than that to gain experience from this life. Okay, so here, travel for Ulysses, the speaker of Tennyson's poem, is the means to satisfy his unquenchable thirst for knowledge. See, one, it is not only for the purpose of recreation we travel. It is also to gain knowledge. Unknowingly, unexpectedly, we get certain informations and knowledge about the places where we go and visit. Okay, unquenchable thirst for knowledge. With his unflinching determination, to strive, to seek, to find and not to yield, not to surrender and to go for conquering more and more. Not only his kingdom but also his experience of this earth. He intends to go beyond horizons of knowledge and experience, that's what. Does not only by extending his kingdom. Conquering more places and extending his kingdom, but also to gain knowledge and experience. He needs to go for a travel. In the modern world, the amenities of travel have improved and the opportunities of travel have increased tremendously, no doubt. Speak to your uh, grandparents. What was the possibilities of traveling during their time? And how it has been developed right now. Earlier it was by walk they went. On the animal's back they travelled. It took much time to travel from one place to another. So automatically because of that, what they did is they kept themselves inside. Though they had the desire to know more possibilities of traveling was very less but right now means of transport has drastically changed and it has given us a space to explore the world why shouldn't we use that okay so this unit focuses on travel and the diverse experience it provides it takes the learners through different facets of travel such as an adoration of natural beauty, a craving for adventure and an exploration of new cultures, customs and traditions. That's what. Certain places, once when you plan for a trip, what all things you will think about? Yes, it is about the conveyance to the place about the climate, about the money, about the stay. So when you decide about the place, certain place it will be like a high ranges, something like uh, monuments, historical monuments, some for only recreation and some for adventurous trips. Okay, so now to the lesson. And I hope you have your textbook and page number 73. Look at the illustration given below. Give a suitable caption to it. Caption, it is like a heading. Make it brief, catchy and novel too, meaningful too. Don't make it so lengthy. Make it brief, 
and write it in caps that's more than enough okay i hope you will be doing that what more would you like to include in this illustration what all things have you seen there a traveler a suitcase a bus a picnic spot isn't it and what does it mean to you all these pictures it is all about travel you understood isn't it and what all things do you wish to add more might be like uh, aeroplane train mountains skiing then hotel isn't it like that it is left to you travel is an integral part of modern life it opens up new horizons of experience that is what very much important is once when you travel it's not only for recreation it is also to gain experience and knowledge about life imagine that you are planning a tour to a place of importance what are your criteria for selecting your tourist destination that's what previously we discussed scenic beauty is given there and then what else more you can add up a spot should be like entertainment okay as we said earlier historical importance monuments the next thing is main thing is about safety you have to think about food and accommodation travel facilities climatic condition of that place isn't it so so many things you have to think before you go for a travel now we'll begin with the po travel is in fact an eye opener why it is an eye opener you come to know about more informations about a place that's what i said earlier more than hearing thousand words about a place it is better to visit that place for once you get a permanent memory in your life it opens up new refreshing snapshots before us snapshots pictures before us and often helps us change our philosophy of life that is important okay we'll begin with the poem okay poem on this screen i stood upon the hills when heaven's wide arch was glorious with the sun's returning march and woods were brightened and soft gales went forth to kiss the sun clad vales the clouds they far beneath me bathed in light they gathered midway round the wooded height and in their fading glory shone like host in the battle overthrown as many a pinnacle with shifting glance through the gray mist thrust up its shattered lance and rocking on the cliff was left the dark pine blasted bare and cleft the veil of cloud was lifted and below glowed the rich valley and the river's flow was darkened by the forest shade or glistened in the white cascade where upward in the mellow blush of day the noisy bittern wheeled his spiral way I heard the distant waters dash I saw the current whirl and flash and richly by the blue lake silver beach the woods were bending with a silent reach then over the vale with gentle swell the music of the village bell came sweetly to the echo giving hills and the wild horn whose voice the woodland fills was ringing to the merry shout that faint and far the glen sent out where answering to the sudden shot thin 
smoke through thick leafed branches from the dingle brook. If thou art worn and hard beset with sorrows that thou wouldst forget, if thou wouldst read a lesson that will keep thy heart from fainting and thy soul from sleep. Go to the woods and hills. No tears dim the sweet look that nature wears. Here, the main theme of the book by H. W. Longfellow is that it is a poem that celebrates the healing power of nature. We'll begin with the last stanza. If thou art worn and hard beset with sorrows that, that thou would forget, if thou wouldst read a lesson that will keep thy heart from fainting and thy soul from sleep. Go to the woods and hills, no tears dim the sweet look that nature wears. So nature, what it makes is it is a perfect soothing agent for mankind. If you are highly worried or if you are tensed, if you need to leave your burdens aside, the best thing is that if you are sick, you will go to doctor. You will go to a doctor, isn't it? So in the same way, if you want to heal your wounds, inner wounds, what the poet suggests is that the best doctor to move is to go to the nature. So, if you go to the woods and hills, you will have no tears. See, we are all caught in the web of life, isn't it? It is not possible uh, to uh, escape from the web. One or the other strand will hold us. So, earlier man was part of a nature. Bonding between man and nature was very strong. So he did not have much worries. But right now, he is caught up in the web of life. And if he needs to relax himself from the hustle and bustle of the sectic life, the better place to move is towards nature. Man is a part of nature. Without nature, there is no existence for man. Beyond that, what can he say? The best place to lose yourself and gain yourself is in the lap of nature. Yes, we'll see to the poem, Sunrise on the Hill. Now the poet, he turns to be the speaker of the poem. I stood upon the hills when heaven's wide arch was glorious with the sun's returning march. So now the poet is on the hilltop. He visits to the hilltop to watch the sun rise. Sun rise on the hills. He watches the return of sun amidst the hillside. He feels it is so delighted to watch the sight it seems. Okay, so this poem is to focus on the attitude of disregard to nature and to protect this flora and fauna. Okay, so with that aspect and sense we will start reading. I stood upon the hills when heaven's wide arch, wide arch, it is an entry, which is like a wide arch horizon. Arch, you have seen arch? Horizon. I stood upon the hills when heaven's wide arch was glorious with the sun's returning march. Throughout the poem, poet compares the sun to be the night, night, a warrior who is coming back after a long time, after a victory. And nature to be the princess who is eagerly waiting for the arrival of this night, this warrior. Okay, so beautiful is this expression. Okay, 
So, I stood upon the hills. Poet stands upon the hills and you can see the aerial view. He stands upon the hills when heaven's wide arch. So, horizon is the heaven's wide arch and that wide arch was so glorious. Glorious, it was with striking beauty with the sun's returning march. So, this horizon was so glorious, so beautiful. He could not express the beauty with words. He says, when the sun is returning back after a war, after a long time, it's so beautiful, it's so glorious. And woods were brightened and soft gales went forth to kiss the sun-clad wheels. And how was that morning? And woods were brightened. Woods, the small dense forest nearby the hills or over the hills. They all got brightened up when this night, when this king was returning back after a long time. Sun comes back after a long time. Sun rise and set. After the sun set, after a long time of gap, the sun very gloriously is ascending to the sky. Very visual uh, beautification is given. Okay, and woods were brightened because of the arrival of this night, the sun. And soft gales, soft gales, morning breeze, you know, gales, wind, soft wind, went forth to kiss the sun clad whales, whales, valleys. Okay, sun clad cloth. Okay, so this valley is brightened with the sun's light, rays. So valley is dressed up with the sun's rays. So what happened is woods got brightened and the soft gales, you know, this morning breeze, you know, very pleasantly it travelled, it went forth to kiss the sun-clad whales, it, it seems. It went forth towards this valley to kiss them, it seems. The clouds were far beneath me, bathed in light. Until then, I have watched clouds only over me. Now when I stand over what I could experience and enjoy is that cloud is far beneath me. If you travel to the heights you know the mountainous areas will be covered with clouds. So here he was so excited telling that I could see clouds beneath me bathed in light. So these clouds were Lit with light because of the sun's arrival after a long time. What happened to all these clouds? They gathered midway around the wooded height. You can see clouds, they move from one place to other. What happened is all these clouds got gathered over the wooded height, over the forest, over the trees. It got collected. And when all the clouds get collected, what happens? It becomes heavier, isn't it? So for that too, he gives an explanation, beautiful expression. Is that they gathered midway round the wooded height and in the fading glory shone like host in the battle overthrown. It was a fading glory and the clouds started fading. How? It is like the host in the battle overthrown. When you people will be so dull and fade, when you lose something. So here the expression of the clouds is like the people who get defeated in the battle. They will be so dull, isn't it? So the clouds were like the people who got defeated in the battle. So like the clouds they were faded. As many a pinnacle with shifting glance. So what happened? It is a dawn. Isn't it dawn? Clouds got high to the mountain ranges. They travel to the height. And pinnacle to the pointed top. As many a pinnacle. Pinnacle is the high pointed tip of the mountain. So now how the shape of the mountain is 
made so creative is that it is like a spear okay so here as many a pinnacle with shifting glance what happened to the pointed mountains this clouds got collided with glow the gray mist thrust up with shattered lance lance it is a weapon with a long shaft you like the spear a long shaft so these mountains are like the lance and when the clouds travel to the pointed to the pinnacle what happened it it got thrust up okay and rocking on the cliff was left so these clouds rocking moving to and fro so these clouds were moving from one mountain range to the other and when it went to the heights and got collided with the tip of the mountain the pinnacle of the mountain what happened it it got scattered up and rocking of the cliff was left cloud stop rocking and the dark point blasted bare and cleft so once when the sun rises up what happens you know the dark pine blasted pine trees you know blasted producing sound you know it got broken and it got split and little by little when the sun was ascending to the top what happened is you can even visualize this the veil of cloud was lifted until now this cloud was covering something what is the veil here veil it is a covering isn't it so veil of the cloud was lifted when the cloud got scattered because with the thrust to the tip of the mountain ranges what happened this veil was removed the veil of the cloud was lifted this veil like a princess you know i said the sun is compared to a knight a warrior who comes back after a war after a long time and nature is compared to a princess who is waiting for this knight's arrival so here this nature you know cloud is like a veil and very softly this veil was removed and below that what was seen the veil of cloud was lifted and below glowed the rich valley who is that nature princess you know when the veil was lifted the beautiful face of the princess was seen who is the princess nature the veil of cloud was lifted and below glowed a rich valley and the river's flow was darkened by the forest shade so here nature the valley is compared to the face of the princess and now river's flow was darkened by the forest forest shade or glistened in the white cascade cascade waterfall this waterfall you know when sun rise sun's rays fall over the waterfalls it's like a white cascade a small waterfall where upward in the mellow blush of day day is not over it has reached to the peak of youth mellow blush of day okay so the sun has rose and now it has reached to the mellow soft very smooth blushing you know who blushes is nature blushes when it uh, sees when she sees to the night the sun nature is blushing okay or glisten in the white cascade where upward in the mellow blush of day the noisy bitten wheel is spiral way so everything in nature gets into an active life who is this bitten bitten is a marshy land bird with a booming call okay so the noisy bitten wheel his spiral way spiral way that is how the birds travel from place so what 
it means is that every speck of nature has its own beauty okay very actually the striking beauty of nature is being explained here okay and uh, now second uh, stanza where the auditory visual and tactile images are splendid i heard the distant waters dash dash with a strong force i can hear i am on the top of the hill but still i can hear the distant water dash to the shore and goes back i saw the current whirl and flash current the move of water swift moving of water rapidly it is going moving i saw the current whirl and flash and richly by the blue lake silver beach so i said nature is uh, compared to a princess so cloud is like a veil and then face is a valley and now what is the eyes blue lakes silver beach blue lake you know blue lakes are like the beautiful eyes of the princess and richly by the blue lakes silver beach the woods were bending with the silent reach in this blue lake you know woods near by the lakes they are bending on this bending as compared to the eyelashes of this princess okay then over the veil with gentle swell gentle swell who is swelling up swelling up rising isn't it what is rising up sun so just gentle swell that is sun rising over the valley sun is rising when sun rises the music of the village bell came sweetly to the echo giving hills even to the near and distant you know the sound is so mesmerizing mesmerizing the sweet uh, echo of the village bell is so mesmerizing and what happens is traveled through the hills when the sound travel through the hills it comes like an echo so each and every part of nature is been observed by this poet and very beautifully he explains it to us if even you can get a very visual impact beautiful visual impact of this poem and came sweetly to the echo giving hills and the wild horn whose voice the woodland fills everything will be so active in the morning nature animals flora and fauna everybody is alive active and each and everything so he speaks about and the wild horn wild horn is a bird and whose voice the woodland fills morning time chipping of birds is so beautiful different types of birds comes with different sounds even that energizes us isn't it okay and ringing to the merry shout merry shout very merrily they are playing because of the arrival of this sun arrival of this sun after a long time okay that faint and far glen sent out everywhere this merry shout was scattered and it was sent energizing the day time where answering to the sudden shot thin smoke through thick leafed branches from the dingle grew like a child goes roams from one place to another shouting you know the sound also was heard from everywhere marking the arrival of the sun where answering to the sudden shot thin smoke through the thick leafed branches thin smoke from the thick leafed branches it marks that they are cooking their morning breakfast okay from the dingle brook from the wooden valley you know 
the smoke came out portraying that life at village is alert they have started cooking food in the morning if thou art own and hard beset if thou art own okay third stanza that is a philosophical touch of the poem if thou art own and hard beset if thou though it is a old english and it is a old form of you if thou art own and hard beset if you are troubled and tired by uh, the hectic life worries and burdens of hectic life with sorrows that thou wouldst forget if you need to forget your sorrows if you are heavily burdened with the sadness the burdens of life what happens is better you start reading if thou wouldst read a lesson that will keep thy heart from fainting and thy soul from sleep so if you want to get relief from your burdens sorrows pains and worries it's better you start reading and that will keep you thy heart from fainting and thy soul from sleep you will feel relaxed nature is bounteous so when you feel heavy from your burdens and worries you will have to do something if you want to console yourself the best person to whom you should move is that go to the woods and hills no tears dim the sweet look that nature wears don't worry about it no cries when you cry you know it blurs your vision no cries can dim the sweet look that nature wears so you will get relief from your pains you will get relief from your sorrows you will feel lighter of your soul see if you want to escape from the burdens of all this treacherous life the best doctor to whom you should visit and who could give a powerful consolation to all your sorrows is that better you go to the nature's lab she will never fail to relieve your sorrows okay whatever you expect is there in nature everything is there in nature so don't get worried nature will never fail to give a smile on your face nature is always alive men may come and men may go but nature is always alive once when nature is dead life on earth is also going to be nil okay human kind also will perish if nature is dead so it is our responsibility to protect this nature if you want to get reduced from your tension and anxiety nothing can help you other than this nature okay so uh, if you have to feel free for yourself where the self can feel free and fulfill its potential if you feel relaxed if you get rejuvenated you can feel your inner potential and move ahead and make your life so colorful bringing smiles in the face of others so optimistic feel a sense of positivity and optimism is felt in this poem okay so possibility of life happens only in the hands of nature all other things in uh, the world will pull you down but nature alone has the ability to give you a helping hand to come out of your tension relax your burdens and refresh yourself for your further life okay i hope you had a good journey enjoying the sunrise on the hills okay so here you have few figures of speech used see one thing is that merry shout merry shout is oxymoron what is oxymoron it is 
coining up the words with contradictory meaning okay so oxymoron and then simile isn't it simile is there and in their fading glory shone like the host in the battle overthrown at a simile then uh, personification like a sun's returning march sun's returning march personification and the soft gales went forth to kiss the sun clad uh, whales personification alliteration assonances all are very much familiar to you whenever you are surrounded by the sorrows of life and whenever you fall over the thorns and bleed if you feel like needing a helping hand you want to get back and run with full vigor to enjoy this life go back to nature and stay there for a quite a lot of time relax yourself rejuvenate yourself and come with a refreshed mind so that you can move on further okay so sunrise on the hills hope you had a good time enjoying the scenic beauty of sunrise on the hills